Hi, and welcome to Morning Coffee with Bazan Academy. I'm Deanna, and today is Great Books Monday. So I thought I would kind of define the term great books. Now, this is something that we hear all the time, and not everyone would maybe know that there is a particular set of books that this term refers to, not just books that you think are great. And so this term was um, coined in the 1920s and 1930s by academics who saw that in college, a lot of students didn't have exposure in younger grades, like they once had, to some of the greatest works of the Western tradition. Now this would be literature, philosophy, history, and science of the ancient Greeks and Romans and anybody in the West that contributed to the great thought of the Western canon. This could be Machiavelli from the Renaissance, it could be John Locke from the Enlightenment, it could be Horace the Roman poet, or Homer the Greek poet. And then in some of the writings about history, Thucydides' writings about the Great Wars, uh, you could look back to Livy and his explanation of ancient Rome. All of these people had this amazing contribution and has allowed the West or anybody in the world understand how the Western civilization unfolded and how it evolved over time. The first great books program was started by John Erskine at Columbia University in the 1920s. After that, other academics such as Robert Hutchins and Mortimer Adler and others from major universities started putting together great books programs. And what these were, were either semester long programs or e honors programs at colleges that really tried to reintroduce these great books that they saw were slipping out of the education system. Now for over a hundred years, this has been a controversial topic in education because you have educational theorists like John Dewey, who was writing in the early 1900s, who was changing the face of education. He advocated that education was to prepare people for a job, that it was had a very specific purpose and people should be learning more skill-based education as opposed to just this sort of wide view of knowledge and understanding. And so education in the 20th century really changed and evolved from being this corpus of these great books from Western tradition dating all the way back to the ancient Greeks and developing the mind to be a well-rounded, um, well-educated citizen to being someone who was being trained for a particular vocation. So things have really changed. And what is the outcome of this is there's really this sort of clash of culture in education of whether or not these works should even be taught anymore. Are they relevant? The irony of Adler and these other academics introducing these works at the college level back in the 20s and 30s is that it put the great books as this ivory tower uh, thing that only academics did and only you know highbrow college students needed to study. It really changed the way that great books are looked at um, all the way through and up until the modern world. And so the great books, which were once just part of everyone's education from grammar school all the way through, became a very sort of isolated or even elitist thing that people would study that a lot of people just didn't think that they needed to read or these things weren't important because they weren't going to go off and be an academic or an intellectual. And so there is sort of a disservice that came out of what happened in the 20s and 30s, even though they had really good intentions. What we do here at the Pazan Academy is that we are trying to reintroduce these great books, like these educators in the 1920s and 30s, and bring them back, because not only does it provide, you know, this sort of general knowledge about humanity, which is very important, it also gives us the ability to understand ourselves as humans, particularly in the West. And although these educators, like Adler in the 1920s, 
were, you know, putting these programs in college, trying to, you know, at least get students exposed to this material, we're trying to get them earlier, like how it was taught for hundreds and hundreds of years. We're trying to expose students to these great works. So by the time they get to college, they have the understanding, they have the knowledge, and they have the intellectual capacity to expand their mind at a higher level. So today there are still colleges that have great books programs. St. John's University has a great program. Uh, Notre Dame has a wonderful program for the great books. And so they're out there and there are still people teaching these on the college level. And there are even schools um, in middle school and high school that are trying to reintroduce these works as well. So you just might have to hunt a little bit to find some of these things. But so if you have a high school student going into college and they've really enjoyed the classics, you can find programs that would be appropriate. Also, interestingly enough, in the 1950s, Mortimer Adler had a television program on the great books. In the 1990s, there was another program on the great books that aired, and they even had people like Donald Sutherland and Morgan Freeman narrating. And so if it's gonna happen about every 40 years, then we should be just about ready for another TV series on the great books. So maybe we can shift the needle over just a little bit once again. So if maybe another television program comes out, then that, appreciation of the great books will sort of be reintroduced and we can get these works taught earlier because that is really the key, is exposing students at a younger age to this rich history of the Western tradition. If you're enjoying our videos, please like them, share with your friends, look at our social media accounts we have in the description below, and I'm off to read some great books. Have a great day.